So first of all, we have a loop something like this. Before we start, we have to clear a couple of things to explain things better when we are talking about the arpeggios. The first thing is the ceiling note. The ceiling note is the highest note on the arpeggio. This is the floor note and this is of course the lowest note in the arpeggio. The central note on the other hand is the note that the other things gravitate towards. And the one last thing is where the arpeggio is gravitating towards. And if you take a look at this specific arpeggio, we have upper focus at the first half and the lower focus at the second half. So this type of pattern is called shout and fall. No, it's not something that I created myself, it's actually in the literature. The name derives from arpeggiation oscillating between the ceiling note and the floor note. Let's say our ceiling note is this and the bottom note is somewhere around here. Do you feel the sine wave feeling? So something like this. The reason that we don't have another F sharp here because we have it here so we return back all the depositions so we don't need to use double. Once you have this, you can start thinking about the coloring notes. For example, in the reference track, there is a, like a contrasting trick. For example, here you can go back to the root note to give this sudden jump. And you can actually balance this other way around here somewhere, like this. And just feel the between here so that we have this small sine wave right there before. Again. So we are shouting here and we are falling down. We are shouting, we are falling down. I'm using my analog house vital preset pack and this preset already has something that is important for this type of style. We have this plucky note which means that there will be a lot of plucks hits and if you have delay you have to duck the delay when those pluck hits comes and in this preset I have an envelope zeroing the mix of the delay so it cuts down every time a new pluck hit comes. Watch out here. Let me solo it so that you can hear a bit better. So the delay is really on the background filling up beautifully but it's not cluttering the main original placket. So let's go listen full now. Really, really elegant. And this brings us to the next one. We had this kind of half build up drop loop. This was a very popular pattern back in the days. It kind of lost its popularity lately. To go for this type of pattern, you should start with a sustained preset sound. Again, I'm using a preset from my Vital House preset pack, sounding like this. So you should start with a super simple melody that is mainly focusing on the ceiling notes. You can move your bass note to give a little bit more melody and depth, something like this. So if you put it down. And the only variation is pulling it down to give this a bit like a settling down feeling here. And at the end of the loop, we have something that's called escape note, just to give a bit of returning feel. If you don't know what escape note is, I have a melody theory video. I will put it here so you can take a look at that. The name Double Trouble comes from actually use of arpeggiator. So in this case, we have an arpeggiator like this. It's just a 16 arpeggiator, meaning that it will double the notes that we are playing. So the main idea is you start your arpeggio without arpeggiator, so giving the slowly going feeling, and then while you're building up, you activate arpeggiator, kind of emulating a double the BPM and giving this kind of tension feel. And the other thing, because these are all sustained notes, it's important to side change the kick so that we can have a bit more pumping feel out of the melody. And finally, because it's kind of more build up, you should automate some of the parameters. I will go lazy with this one and just automate the cutoff filter. 
and of course activate the RPG either like after the first part so that we can have more increased tempo afterwards. And if we play all together now, Really cool pattern and this brings us to the next one. So we have this loop. Before we start again I have my preset from Melodicals pack. So there are a couple of ways to write this type of melodies. Many people first build the chord progression there, I think out of stories about it. But I will show you another easy way to build arpeggios. In this idea we should just having the bass notes in our tummy fingers. It's half of the time G and other half of the time is D. So we will just do, use this and this. The main purpose here is like come up with a simple melody. Bam Bamber's case it's something, it goes like this. Switch the bass note. We are going again. And then switch again bass note. Switch the bass note again. Go up. So try to build an arpeggio by using this methodology and then the rest of the space we will fill in. So for example if I put this into the Ableton now. simple but you already hear the main melody here isn't it most of the time what people do is actually move this around a little bit depending on what they feel and feel the octaves in between for example put maybe this one make it did it, it kind of the leather hence this slow development the same thing here let's do it here as well And then you can just keep using the same thing or you can cheer it up a bit. For example, I think in the band's track he had this kind of B here to fill it up in between. And if we fill the rest by using applying exactly the same technique more or less, we have this. Again, the color notes, what I call them, is really up to your, your feeling, your chord progression. You can pick anything that you like, but try to use the different octaves so that you can have this more glued arpeggio. Let's take a listen. Beautiful. And this brings us to the final piece. This is the most classical way of doing arpeggio and this is the, probably the first thing they teach you when you try to learn a piano. So what you are going to do, use your left hand, just playing the bass note slowly, giving this peaceful vibe. And it's important that you should sustain the note so that the bass fills the space. By the way, if you are wondering the sound, this is just Ableton's Grand Piano single sample. A little bit tape, a little bit EQ on top of that, a little bit reverb. When you're building melody on this type, you should aim for pulsating melody. So dun, 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 dun. Do you feel the pulse? Dun, dun, dun. And the melody development should be really subtle to give this really relaxed feeling.
another important thing right away here is giving this pauses because we need to feel the piece again. Then this pause really feels before changing the melody. Here probably we will change the melody, right? Do you hear that? Then, then we really prepared with that pause, that all tran whole transition. And if we just put the rest of the notes following exact the same thing, we have something like this. Again, the pulsation follows, and we have again a simple pause, and then we change one more time. Other really, really important thing with this type of melodies is using velocity properly. For example, when we are going to stop, you see that the velocities are dropping. When we are leading up to the end of the bar, you see that we are increasing the velocities, making it brighter and louder. Focus right here. Keeping in the middle, now we go down. Pull down, up. 